Tonight, three British companies, they're selling luxury watches. Six or seven different taxes. taxes. It's, it's pretty horrendous. An eco-friendly fuel converter. It's the world's biggest diesel market. Right. It's the world's fastest growing diesel market. And a classic British breakfast spread. Try a sandwich then. Okay, What's the worst that could happen? Our three British companies are trying to make it big in a scary new market. India. And there's one thing about India they just can't afford to forget. It's sheer size. India's economic powerhouse. It's population. Over a billion people. <laughs> and I think they're all around me now. <laughs> the companies have already spent time and money researching India. But what I want to know is, have they really done their homework? If Marmite doesn't work in India, do you both get the sack? Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big gamble. Ultimately, it's their money, their risk, and of course, it can only be their decision. First up, Bremont watches, with a product after my own heart. When I was 18, I got a job selling luxury watches. They're still a passion of mine. They are too for Bremont's founders, brothers Nick and Giles English. It's a bit windy, chaps. It is a little bit. Very nice to meet you, Giles English. Hello, Giles. Hey, Nick. The fact that we're meeting at an airfield gives you a clue that their brand has a unique twist. Aeroplanes. We built one of our watches with some parts of a very famous Spitfire aircraft inside. And this aircraft has shot down several German aircraft during the war. What did this retail for? That was six and a half thousand pounds. And also, you made how many? 120. And if you think that's exclusive, check this out. The boys have designed a watch specially for people who just happen to find themselves ejected from a plane. Not exactly mass market, but who knows, James Bond might want one. I wanted to produce a watch which is beautifully made but very, very robust. And I can quite safely say that watch you're holding there is probably the most tested watch there in the marketplace, especially in terms of extremes. Nick and Giles design the watches. Then it's over to a master watchmaker in Switzerland. The boys do the PR themselves. They packed in their jobs in the city and also sold a previous business to get Bremont off the ground. They now make two and a half thousand watches a year, but it took them five years to get the first one off the production line. When you're a brand our size, I think to be a proper sustainable watch brand, uh, you have to be global. India is one of those countries uh, that has got enormous potential. But how will the posh English brothers go down in India? Will anybody want to buy their indestructible but expensive watches? The next company on its way to India has got big, big plans. Regenetech's ambition is to cure India of its addiction to dirty diesel with a clever, eco-friendly invention. What they've developed is a very simple device that you stick on any diesel engine and instead of using diesel, you can use pure plant oil. Very simple, saves the environment, saves costs, a no-brainer for any budding business. Hello, Peter Peters. Kevin Thomas. Thomas. Pleasure to meet you, Kevin. Hi. To see how the business works here in the UK, I've come to Regenetex HQ in Bracknell to meet the three main men. As it says here, diesel, yeah. and that's used to start the engine and then switches over to the biofuel, right. which goes into this tank here. This is the company's founder, Mike Lawton. Mike's the inventor of the RG100, a nifty bit of kit that converts your diesel engine to run on greener fuels. One of the big advantages of this technology is you haven't got to go and buy a new vehicle. Right. So you haven't got to go and spend... You know, so whatever vehicle you've got, it doesn't matter, as long as it's a diesel engine. Yep. Right. It's not been exactly plain sailing for Mike. In fact, in the summer of 2009, Regenetech was within a whisker of going bust. It was rescued by Kevin Thomas and Bill Thank Courtney you. Smith. So they now own 90% of the business. Yeah. Kevin is from the oil industry. And Bill, well, he owns a fleet of buses that already uses Mike's technology. So what are we doing going to India? It's the world's biggest diesel market. Right. It's the world's fastest growing diesel market. And the engine technology is around about five to ten years behind what we find in the UK. So it lends itself far easier to conversion.
Regenitech don't just sell you the converter, they also sell you the fuel it runs on. In a trade, it's known as secondary use oil. Used oil? What's, what's used oil? What's it been used in previously? Um, Frying chips, making pizzas, making crisps. crisps. There's industrial uses yes. of, of, yeah. of cooking oil. That's a fat lot of good in India because they don't fry chips, eat pizzas or make crisps. So, if a Genetec are going to make it big in India and flog the converter, they're also going to have to strike oil. Plant oil, that is. The third British company trying to crack India is a famous British household name. Marmite. Love it or hate it. Will India love it or will they hate it? Marmite is a small brand owned by a big company, the British global giant Unilever. Here are the professional Marmite lovers who want to sell it in India. What we got? Sarnies. Marmite sarnies on a variety of breads. Right. And some toast. Matt Burgess is Marmite's managing director, and this is the marketing manager, Cheryl Culverley. Just 27, Hotshot Cheryl's a former Young Marketeer of the Year. First, they've got a big job ahead of them, trying to convert me. Sandwich or toast, where do you want to start? Uh, I'm definitely a Marmite inexperienced. I want to say I'm a Marmite virgin. OK. You look like you might like that. I'm trying very hard to say, ugh. Someone must like the stuff. It's been around for a million years. Well, over a hundred anyway. What's in Marmite? It's made from the byproduct of the brewing industry. They take the yeast that they've made the beer with and we concentrate that effectively, take out some of the impurities. Bright idea, great way of getting B vitamins into people's diets. But really the moment that Marmite took off in a big way was when it was fed to the troops in World War I. We do add a, a secret recipe. Oh, of course. Though. I expected <laughs> nothing else. Unilever don't actually own Marmite all around the world. South African countries have their own versions. So do Australia, New Zealand, where the recipes are slightly different to suit local taste. So, can British Marmite score in India? Unilever's Indian partners don't seem to think so. They've already turned down an opportunity to sell it. The local <laughs> man on the ground has said, uh-uh, mm -hmm. not for me. The Indian market's not right for this, I'm out. And you said, your loss, not mine. Yeah. Yes. Wow. So, we're going to take Marmite to India, and if Marmite doesn't work in India, do you both get the sack? Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's our three bold adventure capitalists. Bremont, with their very English brand, Regenitech, a neat bit of kit that needs a fuel supply to run it, and the company's already nearly gone bust once. And Marmite. It's not Cheryl's money at stake, but she's putting her reputation and career on the line. So, the adventure begins. Let's see how they get on. Mumbai, or Bombay as we used to know it, is India's business capital. There's around 40 million people here, and it's my first visit. And if you think India is all about poverty, think again. It's one of the fastest expanding economies in the world, even in a recession. There are more millionaires per square mile here in Mumbai than anywhere else on Earth. It's rising middle classes, 300 million of them, have more and more spending power. There's masses of opportunities here if you're bright enough to spot them. Mm. It is an Indian welcome. How is your face? Thank you very much. It was very good, thank you. For Marmite's high flyer Cheryl, there's the excitement of trying to sell a product no one's ever heard of. For a marketeer for whom your brand is your baby, there is nothing more exciting and interesting than watching people react and interact with your brand. And the idea of doing that with a completely new, almost like virgin territory, like walking in fresh snow, watching a gut reaction from a completely new culture about Marmite, and then also the fun of what do we do with that. 
Mike Lawton's got a really good and neat gadget here, but he needs to find a green ore source. India's the world's biggest diesel market, so there's no shortage of customers for our technology. Our real challenge is overcoming our raw material. We need to get our hands on suitable quality, uh, ethically produced oils to satisfy our end customers. That's the real, real challenge I need to overcome uh, on this trip. Where's the closest about... beach if you, for a weekend, if you want to go somewhere and have a party by the beach? Luxury watch boys Nick and Giles waste absolutely no time in checking out the high-end market. Actually quite excited because you, you arrive here and you just, I've got no idea what to expect, no idea whatsoever. I and mean, you look out the window here, you've got the high rises on the horizon, we've come through some very, very poor areas. And then you've got uh, hopefully a, a luxury watch shop or two around the corner somewhere.